Guthix, the god of balance, is one of the most famous gods in RuneScape. Considering himself to be beyond good or evil, his principle seems simply to be that evil must exist alongside good, and that as long as no excess of either is present, the world will be in balance. As opposed to the bold and demanding gods that once fought for dominance in the magical world of Gilanor, Guthix is mysterious, seeming to have had the least amount of impact on the realm out of any god of the modern era, and surprisingly, he even wishes that the races of Gilanor would forget that he exists and wants to have no worshippers. So why is he a god? Ceredomon spreads his religion to every realm he comes across, as we will soon see, and Zamorak's thirst for power caused him to betray and murder his own god. Lesser beings commit atrocities in hopes of obtaining only a fraction of Guthix's power, so why doesn't he want himself to be worshipped, nor interfere to help the races of Gilanor? Surprisingly, Guthix was once a normal person, and although his original profession as a normal citizen is a mystery, the details behind his ascension to godhood were both legendary and accidental. He resided in the peaceful world of Naragoon, himself being a member of the Naragi race. This beautiful and strange world consisted of floating islands and long-leaved trees interspersed with great cities of people. The Naragi had no war in their world. They were farmers, hunters, and crafters of light. At the time that our story begins, Guthix would have been many centuries old, perhaps a young to middle-aged man to his fellow Naragi having lived his entire life without knowledge of gods, or especially, other realms. He had a daughter named Agi, who was relatively young by Naragi's standards, and a wife named Fraji, who died when Agi was young. By all accounts, Guthix was a normal, sentient being amongst peers, and he was no more notable than any other Naragi. Eventually, Guthix and his daughter would journey to see a nomad who told them that there were disturbances between realms, and speculated that a portal into their world would soon be opening near the great Naragi city of Askroth. Their diviners gathered to welcome whatever beings would be visiting their world, as warfare was unknown to these people. On the day that the portal opened, a young god named Saradelman charged through into Naragoon, followed by armies of soldiers. He preached his religion and used his crown, an elder artifact of immense power, as proof that he was more powerful than these lowly beings, and therefore was worthy of their worship and subservience. The Naragi, unfamiliar with religion, resisted him, and as punishment for defying his will, Saradoman destroyed the vast city of Askroth, and set up a base camp upon its ruins to ransack the planet into submission. This conqueror's goal wasn't merely to attract new worshippers, Saradoman believed that the planet Naragoon held a sacred weapon similar to the crown from which he drew his power, an item crafted by the Elder Gods and Universe Creators themselves and left scattered across their ancient realms, and Saradoman was on a conquest to expand his power. As he utilized his crown's desire to seek out its sister artifacts, he unknowingly alerted the other Elder Artifacts to his own location, giving his exact position to Tuska, a boar goddess of warfare, who shortly thereafter descended upon the Naragi realm with endless armies of soldiers. After years of destruction and violent, tyrannical rule, Saradoman had come to regret his harsh treatment of the Naragi people, and he fought valiantly against Tuska to try and save Guthix's race, but he eventually was forced to flee the realm. During these long years of war, Guthix had hidden his daughter Agi in the storm cellar of his house, hoping to spare her from the destruction caused by these great immortal beings who waged wars over their realm. Very few of the Naragi people had survived to see the day Tuska the Boar Goddess ascended to take control of the planet. The climax of the Naragi God Wars would take place when a new god would arrive, Skargaroth the God Hunter, who wielded an elder artifact known only as the Blade, a sword designed by sovereign beings for ultimate warfare that could slice holes between dimensions and access other realms instantly. Skargaroth relentlessly pursued Tuska into Naragoon, considering himself a lone huntsman far beyond the power of needing armies to help him kill gods, and the battle came to its peak 
before Guthix's very eyes. With Skargaroth alone and Tuska surrounded by armies, the two clash near Guthix's home, with the legendary blade of Skargaroth piercing out one of Tuska's eyes. In a rage, Tuska gored Skargaroth, impaling him on her tusks and throwing him to the ground, where he landed on the home where Agi had been hiding for so long, instantly killing her as it was raised to the ground. In a rage, Guthix of Naragoon charged to Skargaroth and claimed his blade, turning to the charging Tuska and stabbing out her other eye, causing her to retreat from the realm, blinded for all eternity, and defeated. As Skargaroth attempted to regain his feet, disemboweled, Guthix firmly shoved the sword through his back, pinning him to the ground, and inadvertently becoming a god. The blade was an elder artifact, capable of magic that's beyond the understanding of the younger gods, magic crafted from the underlying source fabric of all life in the universe. This blade was designed for war and strategy, and not only could it open dimensions with a swing, but it would also transfer power, memories, and knowledge from any slain victim into its wielder. In this moment, Guthix understood how to wield the sword. He was imbued with the power of Skargaroth, and he ascended into godhood. But what now? His home in ruins, his friends and family dead, and with a newfound ability to walk the astral hallways between dimensions at whim, Guthix left his home realm once and for all, haunted by the desolate shadows and destruction that blanketed the land. Using the blade, he spent many centuries traveling realms and dimensions, seeking a new place to call home a place that would not be beset by so much peace that it would be unprepared for warfare, as was the ultimate downfall of his homeworld, but not so riddled with evil that the realm could produce nothing beautiful or harmonious. During his journeys, he found the sparkling utopian realm of Targiad, home to a crystalline goddess named Saren, who lived in harmony with a race known as Elves. Inspired by this balance between a goddess and a race, as well as by Saren's fierce love for her Elves, he set upon his way to discover a realm to call his own, and many years later, stumbled upon the final creation of the Elder Gods and their most perfect, the lush and thriving realm of Gilanor, completely uninhabited for tens of thousands of years, a world with sprawling oceans, steaming swamps, harsh, arid deserts, and endless forests of evergreens. Guthix claimed ownership of this beautiful, expansive realm, and decided to inhabit it with species that were inclined to neither good nor evil particularly, and also that were mortal. Using his legendary blade, he crafted the World Gate, also known as the Portal of Life, and began to invite and introduce species such as gnomes, sheep, cats, and dwarves, sternly explaining to the sentient beings that he was not their creator merely a being who was inviting them to inhabit a new world that he would craft to perfection. Eventually, Guthix would return to Targiad and persuade even the crystalline goddess to come to this new utopia, with Saren accepting his invitation and carrying her reluctant elves through the world gate to take up residence amongst the evergreen forests in the newly inhabited realm. The discovery of Gilanor and subsequent arrival of its denizens marks the beginning of the First Age. Guthix and Saren spent many centuries together as Saren helped the elves craft the vast crystal empire of Prifdenis, and eventually, after his crystal spires were complete and humans had come to settle in Gilanor, Guthix decided to help their race similarly, using an elder artifact known as the Stone of Jazz to give them charged rune stones as sources of the underlying realm magic that they had no natural ability to wield or use, which rapidly changed and progressed the course of their civilization. This abundance of stones producing an external source of magic earned the realm the popular nickname, Runescape. Satisfied with his carefully crafted world, Guthix sealed the world gate, refusing to allow any other gods inside, with the firm belief that mortal species will obtain balance more naturally without the interference or even awareness of these interdimensional beings who often, as Guthix knew from first-hand experience, value their own power and rule over maintaining natural order amongst the planetary citizens. To Guthix's dismay, 
Temples and shrines were being built and worshipped across Gilinor in his honor. He wanted the denizens of the planet to completely forget he had ever existed, believing that the races and species he had picked to inhabit his land would find balance, as long as they were free of outside influence that would encourage them to pick true good or true evil. In a desire to disappear from the mythos of this planet he had so carefully cultivated, Guthix descended deep underground to rest, falling asleep for what would transpire to be 8,000 years. A few centuries after Guthix's slumber began, other gods began to discover Gilinor. Saradolmen, the same arrogant young god who had learned compassion after dominating Guthix's people only to be dispelled by Tuska the boar goddess, arrived yet again to spread his religion, and shortly thereafter, the god who had claimed the largest empire that Gilinor has seen before or since, Zeros, whose arrival marked the beginning of the Second Age. Guthix slumbered as wars between the gods broke out in Gilinor throughout the Second Age. The millennia-long empire of Zeros and his Majorat rose and fell during his slumber, as eventually, one of Zeros' most faithful and trusted servant, Zamorak, would betray him and ascend to godhood, starting a furious battle to claim the territorial remnants of the Zerosian Empire by the various entities inhabiting Gilinor. 1,780 years after the dawn of the Second Age, the realm violently shifted into the Third Age, when Zamorak the False God betrayed his lord Zeros and began his unholy war to dominate the world, successfully annexing massive portions of his murdered god's empire. Many races of Gilinor, such as gnomes and dwarves, had to retreat underground to escape the wrath of the wars they'd been promised by Guthix not to be subject to as Zamorak's power grew in his desperation to obtain immortality and worship. Other contender gods soon joined in the battle for their own means and desires, such as Armadil and his army of the bird race Avianzes, who had fled from a war-torn realm to seek a home of justice and law, and Bandos, a bloodthirsty monster from a race of rhinoceros-like warmongers. As Zamorak's power grew stronger through his possession of two elder artifacts, he toppled Zerosian city after Zerosian city, expanding his following beyond any measure. Eventually, the other three primary armies of the Gilinor God Wars had no choice but to join forces to forge a holy and legendary blade containing fragments of each of their desires and attributes, the God Sword. This grand weapon was crafted in secret as the only potential counter to the weapons at Zamorak's disposal. Zamorak's primary weapon was the elder artifact known as the Staff of Armadil, so called because it was initially discovered by Armadil himself before being modified and hidden to spare humanity of its power. Eventually, the staff was rediscovered, possibly having been hidden in the Temple of Ikov, after which it was stolen and sold to the armies of Zeros as the ultimate weapon to give him absolute victory, and given in trust to his general Zamorak, who turned it against his god to betray him. His other artifact was the Stone of Jazz, the same artifact Guthix had found and utilized to give magic to humans, and one which was both immensely powerful and difficult to wield. As the three temporarily aligned armies transported the Godsword through a dungeon northwest of Forenthree, the vast continent completely conquered by Zeros during his reign and the location of the most fierce battles, they were ambushed by Zamorak's immense forces, causing a vicious battle between the followers of all four gods to erupt underground. Despite having more followers than the other three armies combined, the battle turned against Zamorak and he fled, but he was cornered by his adversaries, who were closing in to destroy him once and for all. In a last-ditch effort to kill the other gods, and believing it was his last stand, Zamorak did something so horrific that it would finally put an end to Guthix's slumber. Without fully understanding its power, Zamorak tapped the Stone of Jazz and erupted a blast that utterly destroyed Ferenthri obliterating every living thing so completely that the very ground would never again sustain green growth. Multiple species were instantly made extinct by the blast. This absolute destruction was so great that the anima mundi, the underlying life force that the elder gods feed on, the magic produced by a realm imbalance, cried out in pain. Guthix was thrown into an inescapable nightmare due to his inherent connection to Gilinor's anima mundi, and had to be awakened by a convergence of mages. One of his most loyal followers, Adernam, 
froze time within the God Wars dungeon to prevent further destruction as Guthix rose from his slumber to assess the damage and cast judgment. The scene that met Guthix's eyes when he teleported to Ferenthry was one that he had become familiar with many millennia before. The utter destruction resulting only from a battle between gods. As soldiers raged in the God Wars dungeon and spilled into the smoldering remnants of Ferenthry, Guthix declared that the foolish claims and fleeting reigns of these young and insignificant gods was a distraction born of arrogance and pride, and stated that the true elder gods would eventually awaken themselves to consume this realm. His heart devastated at the upset of balance, Guthix established the Guthixian Edicts, a series of magical spells so complex and powerful that they warped the very laws and nature of Gilinor itself. The result of the spells was a barrier completely protecting the realm from entry of any deity, and an accompanying set of rules that the realm must adhere to, dictating religious balance and prohibiting direct contact between gods and the species of Gilinor. In his rage, Guthix threatened the entire planet, stating that should another god war erupt in his realm, he would consider it eternally corrupted by the interference of the gods, destroy it without mercy for any living thing, and remake it anew. As the Guthixian Edict's walls were established, Guthix began the years-long journey of tracking down each of the gods scattered across Gilinor, gods with a wide range of powers and follower counts, and an even wider range of temperaments and reactions to his complete banishment of all the realm's higher entities. The gods who were directly involved in the God Wars were the earliest targets. Zamorak was located weak and defeated and was instantly banished by Guthix. Ceridoman initially pleaded with Guthix to be allowed to remain in Gilinor. Remembering the oppression of the Naragi people that began with this same young god, Guthix flew into a rage and Ceridoman teleported out of Gilinor in fear of being destroyed. Armadil wished to stay, but as his race of Avianzis had been almost completely eradicated by the wars and the survivors yearned only for law and righteousness, they agreed to leave peacefully, understanding of his motives and his goal. Ever the believer in balance, Guthix decided that if gods and deities agreed to go willingly, he would offer them the right to say goodbye to their followers before leaving the realm eternally. The gods who attempted to fight back or flee would be highly prioritized and banished instantly when Guthix tracked them down. Marimbo, the monkey god of laughter and shenanigans, held a roaring party on the Apatol before going peacefully from the realm. A feast of grotesque proportions was procured in the long hall of the Fremenic Seer of Yore known only as V, who had long ago utilized the power of the Stone of Jazz after discovering it deep beneath the Fremenic Isles, and founded the telepathic mages known as the Moon Clan. He too left the realm on good terms and respect with Guthix. Bandos proved much more difficult to expel. He used every ounce of his cunning, power, and warfare prowess to resist being captured by Guthix for years. At long last, Guthix tracked Bandos down to his very own throne room, and upon defeat, the war god asked only for an honorable death. Guthix informed him that he had no intention of killing him, and Bandos called for his armies to assemble so they could be banished together to their home realm, Yabusk. Guthix denied this request, stating that Bandos' goblins were free to remain in Gilinor without his rule, believing them to have only been corrupted by the instruction of their god. When Bandos realized he was being banished for all time without his armies and was losing everything that he had, he became infuriated and charged at Guthix with his battle mace, who dispatched and expelled the war god with a mere flick of the hand. With great sadness, Guthix ordered Saren to leave Gilinor, who begged him not to make her abandon her beloved elves, explaining that in her hatred of death, a phenomenon she failed to understand as an immortal goddess, and her passionate love of the elves, she had magically tied their life force to her own, and that the elves would die upon her expulsion. Guthix would not be swayed, and Saren would undergo her own desperate measures to circumvent this banishment, as told in the quest, The Song of the Elves. After expelling each of the gods, Guthix finalized the laws of his edicts, and retreated deep underground to hide the Stone of Jazz, utilizing many of his mages to hide the power from Gilinor once and for all. As he emerged from the place where the stone, sometimes called the Fist of Guthix, was hidden, the weight of the destruction and imbalance fell on his heart, and he sat down to weep. The Anima Mundi began to shift at this expression of emotion by the true owner of the realm of Gilinor, 
and the very walls of the cave where he sat to ponder began to weep with him, countering his great sorrow with nurturing tears of power to counteract such a powerful bend in the realm's balance. These tears were so powerful that their continued presence could potentially upset Valance and Gilinor once again, so Guthix appointed a guardian to prevent their abuse, the snake servant known as Juna, who disagreed with Guthix over his right and his role as a god, and wished that he would reign over Gilinor, but agreeingly and begrudgingly has protected his tears ever since. Various remnants of Guthix's power have leaked through the realm's fabric as a result of his many years present here. In fact, the Void was opened accidentally by Guthix in his younger years before he understood the power of the Blade, when he arrogantly attempted to destroy a planet infested with a parasite god and caused a ripple in the fabric of the universe. This tear in the Void led to Guthix establishing an order specifically to stave off this threat. But across his time active in the realm, Guthix crafted a great number of guardians to restrict access to higher power sources and remnants of his existence, before eventually retiring deep underground to sleep once again, marking the closure of the Third Age. An old school runescape taking place in the Fifth Age, this sacred resting place is where he slumbers to this day, waiting until balance is thrown into disarray once again.